welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Wozniak is a Ukrainian name. It's a name that uh, uh, my fa on my father's side is Ukrainian. Uh, they were, uh, the, the Ukrainians were under great persecution under Stalin. Uh, I think as many as 10 million Ukrainians were, were killed because Stalin came in and took not only their wheat, but took their seed for the next year's plantings. And so millions of Ukrainians were, uh, were killed and, uh, and some were able to escape, uh, as were my, my grandparents. Both of them came over when they were teenagers on a ship. And they ended up, they thought, let's go to that beautiful tropical, uh, the, 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 the um, southern part of Bismarck, the tropical part, the southern part of North Dakota. And they ended up in Bismarck, North Dakota, in a little town called Wil Wilton. My grandfather was a coal miner. And we were on our way, Cindy and I, to kind of, uh, recreate kind of a little bit of my life and, and check out where my father was raised and, and I was actually born in North Dakota and we were in Minneapolis at the airport and this priest came uh, uh, in. I just love Catholic priests because when they're in a public place and they're wearing the collar there's people who just love them there's also people that just have just you know want to think the worst of them and I just love their courage and he came in to, to find a place in a very crowded uh, terminal and and when I saw him leave, I'm, I'm thinking, this is Holy Spirit action plan. I'm going to go over there and ask him to sit with us. And so we met F Father Jason Sharon, who's a Ukrainian Catholic priest. Aloha, Father. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. So good to see you. So we met at the airport. Where were, where were, where were you heading at that moment? Yeah, I was heading to uh, Bismarck, North Dakota to do a wedding. And what, what church did you end up doing? Did you do it inside our Ukrainian church? Yes, it was at uh, uh, one of our um, uh, Ukrainian Catholic churches um, on the western part of uh, North Dakota. Okay, what town was it? You know, you I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that, but I think <laughs> the name of the church is St. Demetrius. And what, what city was it, or, or, or town? <laughs> Not city. Um, it, yeah, I, I, it doesn't come to me right now. You, oh, so you're <laughs> one of those people that got chauffeur-driven... Yes. And, and, yeah, and your entourage took care of everything. But yeah, when you it's there's a lot of empty between Bismarck and wherever you went, and we probably crossed paths then because when we landed in Bismarck, we went up to Wilton and then headed all the way over to Powers Lake and Tioga, and then went south through Dickinson and down to to uh, to where um, the Badlands is. So we were probably kind of in the same area. Yeah, we were west of Dickinson, but east of the Theodore. Um uh roosevelt uh national grasslands that's where we were we probably probably had breakfast at the same place and didn't even know it <laughs> but so we wanted you know i'm ukrainian i just remember this experience as a young as a youth of my grandmother praying the rosary constantly and that the church was the center of their life and going to this ukrainian catholic church very ornate altar beautiful interior in Wilton, North Dakota, a coal mining town, and, um, and hearing the, the deep voices of the men singing, and uh, that was the thing that really I remember, and, uh, and uh, experiencing uh, the Mass in Ukrainian, because my dad was raised Ukrainian, and then going to uh, my Roman Catholic Church, where I usually went in California, and, it, and it, it seemed like the same place to me, just a slightly different language, and the letters were all backwards in the Missal. So can you help us understand what is the Ukrainian Catholic Church and what is what is our relationship uh, as Roman Catholics? Well, you know, at, at the risk of oversimplifying things, uh, we can say that really we're, we're one family. Amen. And uh, each, each family has, you know, a father and mother and sisters and brothers. And the uh, brothers and sisters, although they're you know, part of the same family. They sometimes keep house differently. You know, one of the sisters likes to vacuum in one way, another sister likes to vacuum in a different way, but they're still part of the same family. 
and uh, the, uh, the the family of God that we call the Catholic Church, which is so beautiful because no matter where you go in the world, you're going to find brothers and sisters of that one household of faith. And uh, it has 21 uh, different uh, East, 21 different churches. Um, the in, Catholic in, within, Church has 21 different churches, all in all under that umbrella of the Catholic Church. Yes, it does. It does. Yep. And uh, now numerically at this point in history, the largest uh, is the, the, the Roman tradition uh, or the Latin tradition to be more precise. Um, but it's not the only one. It's like saying, the, you know, the largest piece of, of uh, the largest slice in the pizza is the pizza. Well, no, it, it's it's a large slice <laughs> of, the, of the pizza, but it's not the only pizza in the box. And uh, uh, so there are 21 uh, slices in this pizza that we call God's family, the Catholic Church. And, Give us uh, an one of which yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, one of which happens to be the Ukrainian Catholic Church. I, you know, for for many years, the Catholic Church was was more of an Eastern Church. It was the the Greek, uh, it was the Greek early fathers. You know that we we rely on so much for having kind of. I mean, the whole church was involved, but it was those Greek uh, uh, speaking early church fathers that seemed to hammer out the details of of the Trinity and 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 other elements of our faith. And I know Saint John Paul II called the Eastern church and the western church the two lungs of the of the church what are some other uh uh do you call yourselves the ukrainian right or 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 or, or, or the latin right or how do we how do we labels yeah. are important we tend sometimes? to yeah to be technical we tend to avoid saying the word right mm -hmm. because it reduces um our whole tradition merely to uh, a liturgical ritual I uh, see. we simply call ourselves um you know the the ukrainian greco-catholic church um and uh, that doesn't mean that we're Greeks, just like it doesn't mean that you're from Rome. It means that uh, the Ukrainian Greco-Catholic Church is, you know, the, the, the land and the traditions where it's blossomed is in Ukraine. Uh, that's the homeland, just like, you know, people from Ireland, you know, their, their roots where they were planted is in Ireland. Um, but the Greco part, the Ukrainian Greco-Catholic, refers to uh, their uh, liturgical roots, and it goes back to Greece, Constantinople. So uh, that's the technical term is not right, but, you know, uh, the Ukrainian uh, Greco-Catholic Church, because church refers to that whole wide, beautiful field uh, with all these different flowers in it, uh, the, the, the ritual itself, the liturgical ritual, but it also refers to the, the spiritual tradition and the uh, canonical tradition, um, the, the, the whole gamut of life that is within the church. So. Uh, to answer your question, using the term church tends to be a little more, well, a lot more uh, accurate. You know, and, and, and you know, I was taking a course uh, in church history at Steubenville last semester and uh, studied, uh, I guess it was King Vladimir. I mean, the Ukraine yeah. basically was converted in a day. Um, my, basically, I understand the king sent out representatives because we need a new we need a new religion. Can, well, can you yes. tell us the story of the kind of the birthing of the of the Ukrainian church it's a beautiful yes, story yes absolutely you know absolutely um you know people have often heard uh the phrase from dostoevsky that beauty will convert the world amen and, um, yeah and so that that's really just uh you know a 19th century adaptation of what was experienced by these uh people from uh kiev rus in the in the 10th century um they didn't have a king really they had uh it, it, the country wasn't Russia, it wasn't Ukraine, it was called Kiev Rus, R-U-S, and they had a grand prince named uh, Volodymyr. And uh, Volodymyr um, was concerned that his principality, uh, his people were falling behind uh, with the other developments that had already happened in uh, Central and, and Western Europe, namely the, ad the adoption of a, of a national religion. Um, and so he sent out emissaries to the various um, uh, major metropoli in the area uh, to look for a religion for his people. And he sent emissaries to, excuse me, I have allergies. So I'm, me too. I uh, got the same so, thing going today, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so, but I don't have an allergy to beauty, Bear. Uh, so he sent out emissaries to uh, um, uh, the, the Islamic countries. And they came back with a report that, you know, things were wonderful, but, you know, uh, they're not allowed to uh, drink 
<laughs> alcohol or pork. And uh, the, the, the legend is, is that, you know, Grand Prince Volodymyr said, well, you know, the Slavs, they love their alcohol and they love their pork, you know, so that religion is not going to work for us. And uh, they went to uh, a Jewish community as well. And uh, they came back and um, uh, they, they, they were not entirely sold on on the idea of of uh, circumcising all the men in their nation. So they uh, sent emissaries to uh, the next greatest um, locale, and that was down the river a little bit to a place called Constantinople. Which what river, what river was that? Was that was that's the yeah, the Bosphorus. The they Bosphorus, it from, okay. in, sorry, the river out of Kiev is called the Dnieper. OK, and yeah, the Dnieper was the um, the the main trading highway, so to speak. Big time, big time uh, highway there, right? Yeah, and that that liquid highway uh, dumps right into the uh, the Black Sea, and from so they go went on the Dnieper into the Black Sea. The Black Sea uh, becomes the Bosphorus, and that empties out into eventually the Mediterranean. So you got Constantinople uh, and, just hanging. Right there, right? So Yeah, so Constantinople is right there on the Bosphorus. And uh, his emissaries um, went there, and they came back with this report. And the report has been widely uh, handed down and duplicated throughout history, but that they said they went into Hagia Sophia, which is still standing. And they came back, and after attending the, the liturgy there with the patriarch, and all the bishops and all the priests, and I think there were 12 deacons serving um, with the chanting and the incense. Wow. And the oil, the, imagine the oil lamps hanging oh, and, and yeah. to light the Hagia and, and the, the, the incense and his, the, the icons and, and the statues. And, yeah. And, and, and th those are not accessories, uh, th those are integral parts of worship because, you know, it, we're. we're were sensory beings and the Greeks had this phenomenal appreciation of the human need uh, to to worship with full our full physicality okay you know, well we gotta senses. we gotta take a break I warned you about this because we could just go uh, on forever we'll be right back we're gonna talk this is such a cool and very important element uh, of the of the Ukrainian and the Eastern uh, the Eastern Church we'll be right back we're talking with, with father uh, Jason Sharon, who we met at the Bismarck Airport about a month ago, Ukrainian Catholic priest. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wazing Adventure. Hey, we want to invite everybody uh, to come to Waikiki, December 7th through the 11th. We're having a, a retreat. Family members are welcome. We'll be having morning retreat sessions and then afternoon fun. And there'll be, we'll be doing all of our sessions outside. We'll have morning mass every day uh, inside the church, which is right next to my house. And so bring your families. You can watch your children play in the water while, while you're attending the, uh, the event. So come to Waikiki for the Deep Adventure Quest Retreat, December 7th through the 11th. You go to deepadventure.com to find out more. Ah. So we're talking with Father Jason Sharon. We believe it was a Holy Spirit action plan moment when we met him in the um, airport at Bismarck, North Dakota. He was on his way to go, to go uh, uh, celebrate a, we a wedding with, uh, uh, in, in that area. And so, uh, and so we, we're talking story with him about the nature of the Ukrainian church. So this thing about beauty and about the icon, you know, the, uh, you know mo a lot of people were illiterate in those days. And the icons and the, uh, the art told the gospel. And, you know, um, 
this this as you said Dostoevsky talked about the importance of beauty and conversion and Father Robert Spitzer has this thing about the five upward yearnings of man that shows us that we're not just animals that we have a spiritual rational sh soul one of those is the desire for beauty and I know uh, Professor Peter Kraft right Dr. Kraft he was converted because of beauty too so so you the, these emissaries are sent down to Constantinople they go into the mm -hmm. Hagia Sophia you know, for, to see a slide presentation on uh, on why they should become Catholic. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, the term Catholic is is uh, difficult to you know to, to latch on to people in Constantinople in the in the ninth century. They they, they just called themselves you know Christians or um, uh, but yeah they, they were they were Catholic you know right. in communion with with the bishop in Rome, uh, the schism had not yet happened yet. So, um, but they, they, uh, go in there and they see this whole panoply of beauty exploding because, you know, with the, um, the angling of the mosaics, these gold gilded mosaics with these oil lamps in their hundreds, um, you know, it, it looked as though if you're coming from the Northern pagan lands where they're, they have no grand architecture. Rustic like this. and rough. They, yeah. No, you know, they see this, and it seems like these images towering over them, you know, 70, 80 feet in the air, and the the, 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 the light hitting the, the, the golden mosaic from the candles, it was just an, ex uh, an amazing experience. And they came back, and they, they reported to Prince Volodymyr, and they said that they knew not whether they were in heaven or on earth. All they knew was that God dwelled there among men. Praise God. And they served wine. As yes, as, they, they did. I mean, yeah. And so they, they understood that cal that uh, Christians know how to fa fast and feast. But uh, and so so then something very dramatic happened. That river got pretty full in the next couple of days, didn't it? What uh, uh, people being baptized or uh, what happened? Yes. Yeah, so um, so eventually, um, uh, Grand Prince Volodymyr made up his mind that this um, the the account of the beauty and that the transcendent uh, was was so convincing that he made up his mind under the influence of um, uh, St. Olga. His, his mom? That, that uh, the people should accept baptism. And uh, as a nation, they were, they were baptized in Kiev in the year 988 in the river Dnipro. Tremendous story. I mean, I mean to, to this whole nation of the Ukrainians really converted because of beauty. You know, and that, mm. that river was full of people being of uh, being baptized. And I guess I guess the uh, the the interesting thing about the Ukrainians is uh, blue eyed, blonde haired, a lot of blue eyed, blonde haired people in the Ukraine because it was the the Rus were a tribe from were a Vi Viking type tribe that came in yes. and and there. So they were a very warlike people and and yet they were converted because of beauty. It's just such a phenomenal thing so now tell us then uh, about now uh the the ukrainian catholic church some people think oh it's a different it's a different church but it's 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 we're all under is the ukrainian church then submitted to the bishop of rome to the pope yeah well we we, we don't say the, the term you know submitted um you know, we, we submit to the Lord, but we're in communion with, you know, the bishop In of communion, Rome. that's the correct word, yeah. So it's different yeah. than the Greek church, which isn't in, com isn't, uh, they have their own uh, uh, right. patriarch, but it, the Ukrainian correct. church. Well, so when my father and mother were married, um, my dad, I think, eventually was, conf I don't know if he was eventually confirmed Catholic, but um, one was Ukrainian Catholic, one was Roman Catholic, but they, they, they were able to be married because they were of the same faith. That's yes. very, inter very interesting. Yeah. Well, here yeah. le let's hear about your personal story, because one of the things I remember, you will have to touch on this as we go further, is that there was a priest at um, this little Ukrainian church uh, uh, that I knew as a, as a ch little child, two, three, four, up to the time I was 13, probably. I, I probably had occasion to go to this church from time to time when we'd visit my, my grandparents. Um, and then one day that priest was gone. There was a priest came and he was married. So can you can you tell us about your story, and uh, and 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 include that in it and help us understand that 
the difference between the, that that being married is a discipline of the church. It's not necessarily a, do, uh, you know, Doctor. whatever. Yeah. So yeah. will you will you help us start us about you? How tell us about your personal um, path that you took to going into this deeper walk with the Lord Just when you were young? Were you raised Ukrainian Catholic? That type of thing. No, no. So I had um, uh, really my, my I wasn't raised Catholic at all. Hmm. Uh, my uh, my parents one was my mom's protestant my dad's roman catholic and uh you know they they weren't married in in the church and uh you know i was about eight years old when uh my father uh he had sent us to a catholic school but we weren't baptized when i was about eight years old my father i uh, had my both my brother and me uh baptized in the local roman catholic church and i remember a lot of the details of the rcic that we went through and I wasn't a very studious um, boy, and I wasn't very uh, attentive, but um, that lady who put up with me uh, <laughs> all those many years ago, back around 1984, um, you know, she, I don't know, I even remember her name, but I remember her face, and I remember her, her, her kindness and her patience with me, and um, uh, that, that made a good impression on me. And uh, anyhow, we, um, we were baptized, and about a year later, we stopped going to, to church altogether, um, at, at my prompting, um, I didn't like going to church Sunday mornings as a boy. Um, and, uh, you know, when I was around a teenager, I, I had a, my mother's friend kept prompting me about, you know, what's going to happen to your soul when you die. And uh, that really started some internal examination. I was a young teenager and, uh, that just, you know, really led me to, to read more and to study and, um, to talk with people who knew about these things better than I did. And it eventually led me to um, start praying uh, when I was around 15 or 16, um, just praying alone. Uh, and I, my grandmother had given me uh, rosary beads when I was baptized. And uh, I didn't even remember all the prayers. I remembered a little bit of the, the Hail Mary and a little bit of the Our Father. And so I would just, you know, 16 years old, kneel down and, you know, I would start uh, praying those um, on those beads that, and talking to this God that I didn't really know much about, but I could feel his expansive warmth in my chest, you know. Praise um, God. And um, so you had a personal, uh, personal uh, yeah, uh, praise encounter. God. Yeah. And and so I uh, I started going to um, mass. Uh, we had a church around the corner in my hometown of Peterborough, Ontario, and um, I, you know, that became a weekly thing, and then it became a daily thing, and so by the time I was um, you know, 17 or 18, I was, uh, I, I, I was all consumed um, by this. And I, uh, I wanted nothing more in life than to, I remember thinking now, sitting down and thinking, what's the absolute best thing that I can, I can give God for what he's given me. And, and, uh, you know, one day it just hit me. Cause I, I'd been thinking and thinking and thinking and the obvious never occurred to me. Be a priest. And I remember it hit me like out of the blue. I, I guess I'm a little slow, but you know, all, after all that time in being in church for those, you know, that two year, year and a half period, the thought never came to me. And uh, so the, it hit me that one day and I thought, well, yeah, of course, that's, well, the, that's the most exhilarating thing that I could do is the greatest gift that I could give is to be a priest. So we, we, we got um, to take a break. Seminary. We got to take a break. So, uh, uh, so out of the blue, because there was those, 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 those rosaries were being prayed, I think. When the Lord's call came <laughs> yeah. to you. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more with Father Jason Sharon, Ukrainian Catholic priest. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. 
Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, man. This is a warning to you. Do not go to deepadventure.com and do not sign up for Bear's Man Cave because you're going to find men uh, that are members of the cave. We have a secret Facebook group and we have every two, two weeks we have a Zoom video meetup. Um, you don't want to go there because if you do, you're going to be changed. You're going to encounter a bunch of knuckle-dragging uh, uh, ne'er-do-wells, I guess you would call it. Uh, we think of ourselves like the Cave of Adullam when King David... Uh, went to the cave of Adullam, and then God gathered to the him all these misfit men, uh, men that probably owed money or were on the run from the law, or I like to say were from their mother-in-law. But uh, God gathered all these, these, these misfits together, and they formed each other, and God formed them into the mighty men of valor. That's what the cave of uh, uh, the man cave is for us. It's the cave of Adullam, where we form each other, and God forms us. And it's just wonderful to see the men grow by uh, leaps and bounds, not only in their faith. When you come to the man cave, one of the first things we do is say, brah, you're 20 pounds overweight. Get in shape. You know, we, we look at we look at if you're going to be a warrior, you got to be a warrior for the Lord. You have to, we call it fitness to witness, for example. you got to get in shape so you can do what God's calling you to do and live as long as God wants you to live. We get you uh, digging into the catechism and uh and we, uh, we, we talk about the seven virtues in my new book coming out, The Twelve Rules of Manliness. Uh, we, ha- we have this, this, uh, this uh, when you come, you're going to find a lot of like-minded people that are just as much of a misfit or knuckle dragger as you are, but somehow God uses us to form each other. And so come to deepadventure.com. Uh, don't click on, on uh, join the man cave. It's, this is just a warning because it's a dangerous place to be, but we'd love to have you there. We're talking with Father Jason Sharon. Uh, we met Father, Cindy and I met Father at an airport in Bismarck, I mean in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We are both on the way to Bismarck, and it was just such a it was just such a Holy Spirit action plan moment uh, that uh, he was looking for a place to sit. And we said, come over here and sit by us. And he sat down and, and uh, it was so, so, I love our Catholic priests when they're out in public wearing the Roman, wearing the Roman collar because they stand out, as, they stand for God. And um, a, lot of, a lot of people these days are not, think of Christians as bigots and, and all kinds of other things. And so I just see that courageous, courageous stand that they're making. And so, Father Jason, uh, thank you for being on the Bear Wozniak adventure. So you were talking thank about how, how, how when you were about 18, uh, 17 or 18, the Lord seemed to put a, put a call on your life to be a priest. And so your next step was? Apply to seminary. So... I, uh, I applied to seminary. I right out of high school, was accepted, and I uh, went to study in uh, upstate New York, um, Augensburg area, Wadhams Hall. And uh, it's uh, kind of, if you know where Lake Placid is, where it's about three hours you know, uh, northwest of Lake Placid, um, uh, between Lake Placid and Watertown, New York, did my philosophy degree there. And, um, you know, I uh, before my last year, that's a four-year philosophy degree, um, you know, I we had, you had to do apostolic work in the summertime. You know, you find something to do and you go back and you help at a parish or whatnot. And I happened to have found a, a job, a volunteer job in Ukraine of all places. In the uh, Ukraine, teaching seminarians theology or English in the, in uh-huh. the Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a real, yeah of all places. It was advertising Catholic World Report, which is still in publication, and they had this big half page advertisement in there. Hey, do you want to learn about? the uh, underground church, uh, the underground Catholics of the Soviet Union. Do you want to learn about Eastern Byzantine spirituality and liturgy, the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom? And my eyes were like bulging out of my head. Like, of course, that's that's like asking a kid if you want a lifetime supply of chocolate. And I'm like, yeah, I, I want to go. And so I, w- I applied to uh, go there for four weeks to teach English to their seminarians. And um, I was accepted. This was in 98. And I went over and nothing, nothing nothing prepared me for the Disneyland of Catholicism that I discovered hidden under the wrapper of Joe Stalin's former uh, decrepit uh, Soviet Union. You know, um, that that land, that uh, God-kissed land, uh, but a long-suffering people who lived through an evil, evil regime of the, 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 Soviet, the Soviet Union. And um, I uh, discovered a church that was 
poor, but rich. A church that was suffering, but joyful. And uh, my heart was just uh, transfixed. Um, and while I was there, I discovered that they didn't just have uh, seminarians studying English uh, at this summer school in the Carpathian Mountains, but they had um, what a friend of mine called a permanent supermodel convention of young women studying theology uh, who were uh, there to study English as well. And I, I met my future wife there. And uh, so that was the, uh, an amazing summer of 98. And um, I went back to the seminary and uh, was called into the office and said, you know, you're, we'd like you to go and study in Rome. And uh, I just said, I can't. You know, I, I, it's a dream of every young man who wants to be a priest to go and study in Rome. But I, I just said, thank you, but I can't. I'm, I'm far too confused. You know, I, my prayers are the prayers I learned in Ukraine this summer. I'm singing their liturgy. I'm singing the Vespers prayer. And my mind is on this really beautiful girl named Helena, you know. So uh, I ended up taking a, finishing my four-year philosophy degree in the seminary. I got permission from my uh, Roman Catholic bishop uh, to take a year off. And uh, so I went over and I taught for one year, and one year became three years. Uh, I taught English at the seminary in, in the Ukraine. Same place, and, the uh, same place, up um, in the mountains? We, we were married at, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you talked her into marrying yeah, you. Well, actually, the, um, <laughs> yeah, the, the actually the location was in the beautiful city of Lviv. So if any of your viewers are looking for um, a beautiful, off-the-beaten-path city in Eastern Europe that hasn't been overrun by tourists, go to Lviv, Ukraine, L-V-I-V. And so that's where the studies took place. The, um, the summer school program was a temporary thing they do up in the mountains. And did you uh, do you ever lead? So uh, do you ever lead pilgrimages there? You know, I've never I've never done that. I've I'll never go if you, if you go. I'll go. Let me ask my uh, my bishop and my wife. Yeah, that'd be cool. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I interrupted your. Go ahead, continue, please. And uh, yeah, so I, I I stayed there, and I to be honest with you, this is getting I guess back to your question about married priesthood. You know, I wasn't. Uh, really sure of this distinction about priests being married and or celibate um you know it's a discipline it's not a doctrine it's certainly not a dogma of the faith um but uh you know i wasn't as a young man entirely clear on that um and that's nobody else's nobody's fault except mine you know um but uh, when i was there i wasn't sold on the idea of priests being married um, and people often will think of that oh you were in the seminary you went to ukraine to find a wife get married and come back here but you know, I went over with the intention to live there. I learned the language, and um, I uh, had no intention of really coming back. I Once I decided to marry her, I figured well, this is where we'll, you know, we'll live. And it was so, uh, the secularism wasn't as advanced there at that time as it is now mm-hmm. over there. But um, uh, I didn't buy into the idea of a priest being married until... Um, and I, I'd met a number of very good priests who were married. Like Father Roman Galadza in Brampton, Canada, extraordinary men who really are trailblazers and good husbands, good fathers, and good spiritual fathers. But um, what really turned the page for me was uh, in, in around 19, no, but 2000, the year 2000, we were in the deep Carpathian Mountains and our overcrowded truck, a bus we were on, and it stopped on this dirt road with a bunch of people and we were already overcrowded and anyone who's traveled in Eastern Europe knows what I'm talking about. You know, you're, there's only standing room in the vehicle and they stopped to add another 20% more capacity onto it. So it was just super crammed. And this old man is coming on and I, I could see him through the window and I said to Helena, I said, that man's a priest. And she said, how do you know he's a priest? I said, I don't know, Helena, but I'm telling you that man is a priest. He didn't have a collar on like I do. Mm-hmm. He was an old man bent over and uh, I made a point of grabbing him when he came onto the bus and said you're sitting with us and sure enough oh, wait, he wait, was a wait, married what? priest and okay, he no, was wait. bent over because he had... yeah, we got to take a break this is really this is really cool isn't it uh, we got to take a break sorry father <laughs> I told you I'd have to interrupt you 
But it's like when I grabbed you and said, you're sitting with us. Isn't that interesting? But you grabbed this priest and yes. had him come sit with you. We're talking about Father Jason Sharon. He's a priest in the Ukrainian Catholic Church, which is uh, part of my heritage. And we're going to talk story a little bit more with him about uh, his, uh, his path towards priesthood and his love for the Lord. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to thank you, Mama Bears out there. We love you so much. We know that our ministry kind of runs on your prayers. Yesterday, Cindy and I were at Mass, and um, we saw beautiful families with the Mama Bears there with their children. But we also saw those women who are especially dear to my heart, who are sitting alone wearing a wedding ring. And they're there and they're praying. They're there before everyone else and they're praying the rosary. And we love you, uh, Mama Bears, and we're here for you. Um, and we wanted to invite you uh, to go to our website, become part of the Mama Bears. You know, Mama Bears aren't sweet and cuddly. Uh, I, li- I had a cabin in Montana. Cindy and I were up in Glacier Park right after we fa- saw Father Jason uh, a few weeks ago. And when I said, when I thought of the coin, the phrase mama bears uh, for those women that love our ministry, my son came in the next day, Jeremiah came in the next day, and he goes, hey, Dad, remember when we had our cabin in Montana and those, those, uh, those fierce mama bears, how fierce they were and scary, you know, you had to be careful. And I go, yeah, that's right. And that's who our mama bears are. They're fighters. They don't mess with their cubs. Uh, and so we want to invite you mama bears to come and become part of the mama bear. Ohana, you can uh, j- join the mama bears and... Uh, and we have a new Facebook group that we're putting together for you. And guess what? Someone gave me a bunch of these Catholic biker bears. You see, there? it's Catholic bikers. It's a black bear. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the, the cross on the bottom um, of, his, of his feet. And we have about 40 of these left. We'll get, we're giving them to every new mama bear. So consider joining our mama bears. We know your, your heart and soul behind our ministry and praying for us. We'd love to be in touch with you. We have Father Jason Sharon. And it's so interesting what we were talking about just before we left because a very similar circumstance happened. When we met Father Jason. It was Holy Spirit action plan moment. We're in a busy, busy terminal in Minneapolis. And I see this priest walk in and he's looking for a place to sit and there's no place to sit. So he goes back around the corner, and I go, I'm going to go ask him to sit with us. And, and, and all beautiful things have happened since then, the Ukrainian Catholic priest. And so you're talking about the exact same thing happened to you. You're on a crowded bus, and you see a gentleman walk in. He's not wearing a collar, but you knew he was a priest? Yeah, he, he was physically, you know, um, uh, depleted. Um, and you invited older. him to come sit with you. And so, yeah, but was just cram packed um so much so like like the, the the windows had condensation on them from the the, the heat in the vehicle it was uh, and uh, so we made you know we doubled up and helena sat in my lap and i gave him my seat and and uh, he sat down and i just looked at him and i uh my ukrainian was pretty broken then and but i, I said to him you're are you a priest and he he looked at me and said yeah and he uh he had uh spent um, I can't remember now. I think it was about eight years in the Gulag in Siberia for being, wow. um, you know, a, a Ukrainian Catholic priest. And he would not, you know, th- those priests, he and his wife went, both he and his wife went. And uh, they weren't asked to deny uh, the incarnation of our Lord. They were not asked to deny uh, the title Mary of God. They were not asked to deny the Trinity. They were not asked to you know, commit sacrilege against the Eucharist or anything like this. 
they were simply asked to deny uh, a principle of ecclesiology, you know, the principle of communion with the Bishop of Rome. And uh, mm. they wouldn't do that. And they lost everything, you know. So here in the West, you know, we have uh, we Catholics who are asked to, you know, give up meat on Friday or something like that. Or, you know, you know, don't support the, you know, the gay pride parades or something like that. And they can't bring themselves just to abstain from the, these things. Uh, this man was asked to abstain from commemorating the name of the Pope, the Divine Liturgy, and he wouldn't do it. And he was sent to Siberia. And uh, he, I'm telling you, the man had, uh, th there was a glow about him. And I, after I met him, I thought, if this man, a married man, can be both good holy priest and a good holy husband then i want what he has you know? Amen. That's so, so that cool. was my my uh conversion within a con conversion within a conversion so to speak so uh shortly thereafter i um i applied to, to seminary again the ukrainian seminary so for those who yeah. are listening and aren't, aren't aware yeah. of it ukrainian catholic priests can be married as long as they're married before they're ordained i believe is is what that the, the caveat is there Yes. And so, so you, where did you go to seminary? So I uh, actually applied in Ukraine, and uh, the bishop there uh, said, "No way! I mean, we have our seminaries are so full. Guys finish eight years of seminary, and then they're driving taxi for four or five years until there's an open really thing in a parish." And uh, yeah, yeah, this was back twenty years ago, and I mean, they still have a lot of questions, but not like they did at that time. And he said, you know, your bishops back in North America are desperate for priests and you can speak English. That's your native language. So you have no business being here, buddy. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, uh, even though you love the I, Ukraine. I ended up applying yeah. and being accepted. Yeah, I, I really loved it. And uh, I still love it. I think of it every day. I think of it every day. The great faith of those people. Um, and uh, so I ended up going back to my homeland of Canada, where it just so happens by divine providence, we have a seminary which uh, allowed married men as well as single men discerning celibacy to study together uh, in for their theological formation. So I did my my uh, my seminary there. How rich, how beautiful is that? Yeah. Father, um, can you, would you pray the Our Father for us in Ukrainian? I, I, the Ukrainian oh, language is part of my heritage. When my, when my, when my grandparents would speak to each other was in Ukrainian and when their friends would come over they'd have this it looked like a Welch's grape juice jar full of wine that they would share they would say would you like some wine oh no 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 okay just a little bit and my grandmother grandfather start pouring that wine in that glass and as it get to the top but not too much and then it was it get to the very top and almost ready to spill they go that's enough that's enough and uh <laughs> and i would hear them i didn't hear that in english i heard that in ukraine can you pray for us the our father in ukrainian Chlib nas na sušni daj nam sohodni i proste nam provine naši, jake me prošajimo vinovacijem našem i ne vede nas u spokusu, ali vizvoli nas vi vokavo amin. Vimeacija i sena i svetoho duka. Amin. Now you have a, a rhythm to that prayer. When, I, when, when earlier we prayed the Hail Mary off air, air, there's a kind of a rhythm that's different than the English rhythm when you prayed the Hail Mary and when you prayed the Our Father. But I kind of remember that kind of rhythm and the cadence of the way they spoke when I was little. Just interesting. Mm -hmm. you pray the Hail Mary for us? Bohorodica divo raduj se, blahodatna Marija hospodste boju, blahoslovena teme ženkame i blahoslovena pidlona tvoho. Po te porodila Krista spasa izbavitelem dušem našem. Amin. I mean, it's so beautiful. Thank you. You know, it's like when I, I have the the Laudate app, and you, here you hear John Paul II will pray um, the uh, the Rosary in Latin, but he has that deep that 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 deep voice that you have, that deep resonant voice. It's so Ukrainian. <laughs> it's just so mm -hmm. Ukrainian. And well, his mother, me, his mother yeah. was from uh, the Ukrainian. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. The border, apparently. I didn't yeah, know I'm that. Not, now, I'm not saying she's ethnically Ukrainian. That right. may be uh, going back, but she 
she was from what her hometown is in the territory of Ukraine today. Well, and the Ukraine is is huge, you know, uh, geographically it's it's huge. Um, but we we need to we need to head out here. Is there anything you would like to say to us, uh, or the even the, especially the Ukrainians or Eastern Europeans that are listening about um, just giving their lives all their life to Jesus? Yes, can, the Ukrainians and the Eastern Christians who are listening, I tell you this, do not be ashamed of your heritage. Share it. Share it widely. If people around you have forgotten their apostolic Christian roots, share yours with them. If churches have forgotten the beauty of prayer, the beauty of song, the beauty of icons, share yours with them. You know, Father, it's it's so beautiful because I love interviewing you. Like, I remember... Uh, going to mass, uh, different masses oh, in Greece and Croatia and Italy and Ireland and uh, Israel and you know it, it, it's a Catholic church. You know, it's I don't want to say it's like McDonald's, but wherever you go, it's basically the same. You know, when you go to a Catholic church, you know you're in a Catholic church. It may look different, their language might be different, but but the the sacrament, the, the centrality of the Eucharist is always evident. And uh, so it's just so fun to get to be exposed to a, this broader spectrum of the, of the Catholic Church. We're talking with Father Jason Sharon. If they want to reach you, Father, is there a way they can reach you? I know you're very busy. Yeah. Uh, go to htucc.com, htucc.com, Holy Trinity Ukrainian Catholic Church.com. That's our parish website just outside of Pittsburgh, and uh, contact information is there. And uh, say hi to our friend Matt Frad for for us when you see him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll get hey, to you. shout out to Matt Frad. Pints of Aquinas. What's that? When you told me you're friends with Matt Frad, I was so shocked because I didn't know he had any friends. But we're so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love you, Matt Frad. Just a shout out to you. We love you, Father Jason Sharon. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.